Hello and welcome to my series of conversations with men and women as ideas, vision and philosophy define our contemporary world. My guest today is one of India's great writers. He's done more than 20 collections of short stories, 10 novels, numerous collections of poetry, drama, short plays, and has been awarded the Padma Bhushan, the Sahitya Academy Award, uh, the Ghalib Award, you name it. He's most recently been in the news, and that really forms the, uh, the focus of uh, this evening's conversation, uh, with his definitive transcreation, as he describes it, of the Guru Granth Sahib. I'm delighted to welcome Kartar Singh Dugal Sahib. Thank you. Uh, one of the great sort of achievements of this, um, perhaps first in, in, in this form uh, and, and in manner, uh, translation of the Guru Granth Sahib is that you have been able to do it uh, in verse so that it can at the very least uh, be recited if not sung and that really is sort of the, 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 the character uh, of, of the original work itself. Uh, and I am surprised that I have got the news from America that they, they started singing it also you know. Wonderful. They have their, now their, their Kirtan is in English mm -hmm. with this because this this is in verse, you know, they can they have started singing. I thought they will not be able to uh, 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 mm -hmm. sing uh, the verses, though they have started singing also. You had a long and, and, and distinguished career as 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 a creative writer, uh, and and looking largely at at, at your own environment uh, in in Punjab, and you write with great uh, fluency in Punjabi, Hindi, Urdu, and of course English. Uh, and, and usually sort of, you know, your writing looks at the struggles and the passions and, 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 and the more sort of intense human relationships uh, that uh, form the backdrop of our lives. Uh, what prompted you uh, to look at uh, the Guru Granth Sahib? Was it that a time in life that you felt that, uh, you know, now maybe I should get down to something like this? It's a very interesting story. Uh, you know, I was in uh, Rajya Sabha for six years. And uh, in Rajya Sabha, I had some time so to spare. And it so happened, Sahit Academy wanted 15 compositions of Bulle Shah translated into English for their uh, history of uh, medieval India literature. So they asked me to do it for them. And I, since I had time, I was glad to undertake it. And I, when I sat down to translate Bulle Shah, I was so much lost in it that I translated the entire Bulle Shah. And it was published under the title The Mystic Muse. The book was talked about a great deal in, here in India and in Pakistan, you know. After finishing Bulle Shah, the mystic, I thought of Kabir, the Bhagta, the saint. I have been a great uh, admirer of Kabir all my life, you know. He has have always enchanted me. I believe he is a sort of a poet of international stature. So this was the sort of yes. kind of preparation, yeah. uh, the countdown yeah, to the Guru Granth Sahib. Then I went over to Kabir, you know. And I translated Kabir, Kabir as recorded in Holy Granth. And you, because the Kabir that you find in the Holy Granth is the most authentic Kabir, you know, because once it entered the Holy Granth, nobody could interfere with the text, you know. So I translated Kabir. My publisher brought it out in the form of source, says Kabira. This book was also. Well received and applauded. Very well received, you know. <laughs> After finishing Kabir, I didn't know what I was, what next I was going to do, you know. And the whole day I was lost in it. I said, do I go back to my creative writing, a play or a novel or a collection of poetry, a collection of short stories? I didn't know what I was going to do next, you know. The whole day I was preoccupied with this. In the evening, as I was going out for my walk, and such decisions usually I take during my evening walk, telephone rang, and I picked it up, and lo and behold, it was my Punjabi publisher, 
Papa Pritam Singh, you know, the old man. He rang up and he said, Dugal Ji, I have a request to make. I mean, what is it? You have written so much for me and I have published so much and I have enjoyed it. Now I want you to translate Guru Granth Sahib for me into English. Hello, and here is a solution to my problem. What for you would you say to a lay person? And if I said, what is the Guru Granth Sahib about? What would be its central message? Guru Granth Sahib is, uh, uh, is in poetry, as you know. And not only poetry, is the entire Guru Granth Sahib is written to music also, is to be sung, you know. And music uh, has been given a very high place in Sikh, uh, Sikhism, you know. What is uh, the in a philosophical, intellectual message of the book? Message, that it's truth, you know. This is, truth is above all. Above truth is the truthful living, you know. A life of truth, you know. This is what, this is the great message which Guru Granth Sahib gives, you know. Mm -hmm. Truth is above all. But above truth is truthful living. This is what I, I found. Also, in the sense, it is, it, it, it is the word of, of God transmitted through the Guru. How definitive and final is it? Is it open to interpretation? Is it open to evolution? Uh, does it change? Does social realities change? Or is it, in a sense, frozen? This is the word Nothing. of wisdom. It, it, it is. It is. <laughs> It's sort of what Guru Nanak said, you know, probably, why probably? It's a fact that, you know, Guru Nanak had a mission which he could not complete in his life, you know. Therefore, the, the, it was carried forward by Guru Angad and Guru Amar Das, then Guru Ram Das, then Guru Arjan, and so on to, until Guru Gobind Singh, you know. And the, the uh, changes of the times, you know, are reflected in what, what they said, you know. This, this is very important, you know. And then came a stage when Guru Gobind Singh terminated this, uh, the, the succession of Guruship, you know, and then invested the holy world with, the, uh, with Guruship, you know. Then Guru Granth Sahib is the Sikh Guru incarnate forever and ever, you know. So this is, this so is it's, what it's the final is. authority. Final authority forever and ever. No more change, you know. Mm -hmm. Here you have come, now you mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. delve in it, read it, sing it, and mm -hmm. solve your problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, many religions are born out of uh, social imperative, social needs and necessities. And I, f I find it quite remarkable that uh, you know, Guru Nanak was to make a, a pilgrimage to Mecca, uh, even as he was rooted in, in, in many of the sort of, shall we say, the Hindu traditions or the, or the, other, the other local traditions of, uh, of, of India. Uh, would you describe this as uh, a synthesis uh, or something that goes beyond uh, uh, bringing together different uh, religions? And if so, are there elements in it of You've got Islam? It, you know. <laughs> Guru Nanak, in fact, you know, Gee. came and met the requirements of the time, you know. They were Hindus, they were Muslims, they didn't trust each other, you know. Guru Nanak brought them together, you know. His first message was, there is no Hindu, there is no Muslim. All are one, you know. This is one. This is, this is what he said, you know. He brought Hindus and Muslims together, you know. That was his message, you know. Were there a lot of Muslims who embraced uh, Sikhism at that time? He did. He, 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 he wouldn't. He, he would ask you to be good Muslim, Muslim, you know. He would ask you to be a good Hindu, you know. He says, don't bother to be a Sikh. If you are a good Muslim, you are a Sikh. If you are a good Hindu, you are a Sikh, you know. This is what, this is what Sikhism is, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're watching a conversation with Kartar Singh, the girl who sort of most recently uh, been in the news for his uh, definitive transcreation of the Guru Granth Sahib. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. <music> Welcome back to a continuing conversation with Kartar Singh, the girl. Uh, we've been talking about uh, Sikhism, and uh, you described it as a very simple. 
practical religion that uh, you know, Guru Nanak uh, urged people to move beyond a life of meditation and contemplation to a life of action. I think amongst the most sort of visible symbols of Sikhism and, and, and explain to us its significance, you know, are the turban and the sword uh, that, that you came, carry. That, that didn't come with Guru Nanak, you know. Guru Nanak was like you. I mean, as he was, as the people around him were, you know. It, 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 it was in Guru Gobind Singh's time that he wanted to organize the society, the, the mm -hmm. community, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was the need of the hour, you know. Mm -hmm. He found that some of the followers of Guru Nanak, followers of Guru Gobind Singh, you know, because they did not wear long hair, you know, they sometimes uh, sort of deceived their, uh, those around them, you know. So he says, you must have your identity so that you can, you can live by it, you can fight for it, and if it need be, you die for it, you know. That was the, 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 the message that Guru Gobind Singh gave when he gave the six a, 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 a form, you know. Mm -hmm. And he organizes Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. See this slogan, mm -hmm. Guru's Fateh, you know, Vaheguru, God's Fateh, you know, and Khalsa is, is, is God's, you know. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it, 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 the, 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 the success in life is theirs also. So explain you know, to he us. He is a so man you know, of being. So know. explain to us what Khalsa is, what the significance of, of um, beyond the identity, uh, is, is there a significance to not cutting your hair, uh, to, to the carrying of the sword and, and, and the other sort of symbols of Sikhism? As I said, you know, all these symbols, was the need of this carrying sword was the need of the hour, you know. He created a, a, a community which fought for the weak, for the oppressed, for the, those who were sort of being exploited, you know. That is what Guru Gobind Singh did. You but know. did they fight in defense of their faith? Was they that always legitimate? fought in defense, you know. They, they never, you know, this, you, even until Maharaja Ranjit Singh, you know, he never would attack. He would defend. This is what, 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 what Guru Gobind Singh had taught us here. So in what ways was the religion that was born on a inclusiveness, how did it justify fighting for its faith? I mean, I locate this in, in, in the larger global context where there is so much fighting about fighting uh, one's faith. It, that was the need of the hour, you know, to, to sort of... To, Guru Gobind said, uh, the sword is the last resort, you know, when mm -hmm. when everything else has been tried mm -hmm. and it has not worked, mm -hmm. I pick up the sword, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. This is what he told Aurangzeb, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and it worked. Mm -hmm. He says, I have tried my best mm -hmm. to make friends with you. Mm -hmm. But when, when Chukar Azama Hilate Darzat, Allah Burdan Basham Shikash, then it's, it's, it's right to go to this world, you know. You have a number of times, you know, used the phrase, uh, the need of the hour. As the needs of the hour change, and, you know, we, we, we keep getting reports, it's happening in France right now, mm. you know, the whole issue of whether people should wear turbans or not, and, and whether turbans, uh, whether, uh, you know, tur helmets should replace turbans when you're going mm. on a motorcycle, mm. or what have you. Mm -hmm. The need of the hour has changed. As, as, as a, a modern liberal Sikh, do you, are, are you willing to say that no, these needs have changed, so maybe we should change yes. these symbols? When the need of the hour was different, they acted in a different way. For instance, you know, at Hassan Abdal Panja Sahib, you know, when they would not agree to stop the train at Hassan Abdal so that the people of Panja Sahib could feed the starving uh, patriots, you know. They, 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 they sat they, on the tracks on the rails, you know, and they were, they were crushed. This, they, they didn't fight there, there, you know. They didn't come out with sword, you know. They said, we must stop the train, and this did st Stop the train. So, would you, as 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 a practicing Sikh, uh, be willing to 
if the need of the hour changed, uh, you know, move beyond your turban and, and, and accommodate the imperative of wearing a helmet, for example? I think if uh, God <laughs> helps, you know, I would certainly rise to the occasion. You know, <laughs> you know you've also sort of used the word uh, God, you know, quite often. Uh, what is the relationship here between the gurus and, and, and the God? Uh, are they sort of the, the intermediaries between God? Are they merely the uh, sort of uh, the, the, the instruments where they, they recreate or they, they communicate the word of God? Uh, did they get divine revelations? Did they in the, in, in, the, in, 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 in the Hindu tradition have sort of in a sadhanas where they engaged in a practice? Was it spontaneous? What happened? It's different with Sikhism, you know. God is truth, Guru Nanak says, you know. This is what Guru Gobind Singh says, you know. Truth is God. And you find truth in your Guru. Your Guru is God, you know. This is how it is, you know. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, you don't have a, a God and a, 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 a That God a, is energy the Zambhava and the Avanji and so on, G, no. G. God is truth. Mm -hmm. And our Guru is truth. And Guru Granth is now the Guru, you know. Mm -hmm. it, and it, 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 it is a sort of truth incarnate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is You're watching a conversation with Kartar Singh Dugal, uh, the writer, novelist, former member of the Rajya Sabha, information advisor uh, to the Planning Commission, and a whole range of uh, responsibilities. We'll come right back after a short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to a continuing conversation with Kartar Singh Dugal. I was talking about, I, in signing off before this break, I mentioned sort of, you know, the many responsibilities that you have held. Uh, how did you reconcile uh, your spiritual quest, which is obviously such an important part of your life, uh, with, uh, with the everyday mundane life of living and, 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 and coping with babudam bureaucracy? You know, you worked for years. Uh, uh, with All India Radio, uh, you were a producer of drama there. So how does this spirituality manifest and reflect itself in your everyday living? Well, uh, I am grateful to my parents because I was brought up in that atmosphere, you know, right from early uh, years, you know. I, I, I was I would go to the Gurudwara for my prayers, you know. I would say my prayers and this is how, that was the way of my life, you know. And uh, then later on, I found it worked, you know, to make a better man of me, you know, better student of me, better husband of me, better friend of me. Tell me, uh, when, when you used to pray, uh, as, as a Sikh, what do you pray for? I pray for truth, you know, so that I should live a clean life, you know. I, I should live a truthful life. This is what I ask for, you know. And I think I've been uh, successful. You know, you've had a, you had a ringside seat uh, to, to, to the struggle for freedom, the independence movement. And there was this whole aspect of the truth, you know, sort of Gandhiji used truth, satya from forth, you know, to describe satyagraha, the whole pursuit of the truth. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it is different perceptions of truth that lead to so much conflict, because, you know, I say my truth is different to your truth. So are you willing to acknowledge that there are different versions or perceptions of the truth, or is there C just certainly. one truth? And it's not as though I have not suffered in my life, you know. I have been persecuted for, for being a no communist. Fault of mine, you know. <laughs> At one time, and you I were labeled by a chief minister uh, as being a, as a, as a, a progressive. progressive writer, uh -huh. the communist, you know, mm -hmm. dreaded and mm -hmm. chased from one station to another. All promotions stopped, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. and, but ultimately, it turned out that everything was all right. I was at the top. And but would I, you that, acknowledge that, that, uh -huh. this gives me faith in the truth, you know? But would you acknowledge that there are different perceptions of the truth? That as a Sikh, you have a vision and understanding of the truth. 
uh, a Muslim may have a different perception of the truth. Uh, Hindu, Buddhist, or, or whatever. So, do you acknowledge there are different truths? No, I don't. Or is there one truth? No, the truth is, truth is, it remains the same. It's eternal, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you may have your own viewpoint, the, you, the way you look at it, you know. But truth is eternal. Truth mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. lives mm -hmm. always, you know. Mm -hmm. This is how. This is what I, mm -hmm. life has taught yeah. me. I think that, you know, uh, one of the sort of many qualities that, uh, that Guru Nanak's, uh, you know, teachings have was this aspect of being inclusive, of being tolerant and, and accepting of other people and other traditions, and that's something you've commented on. What then forms the basis of tolerance and the celebration of diversity by the Sikhs? I think uh, Sikhs, uh, diversity there is in life, you know. But the, the way of life which, is, which we have, the six have inherited, you know, makes you feel comfortable with your neighbor, you know. I was born a Sikh in a highly uh, religious, religiously devoted family. I came across a, a, a Muslim uh, young girl, we, we fell in love and I married her and my people, my society, everyone and appreciated it, they accepted it, nothing wrong with it, you know, and we made an excellent husband and wife, you know, excellent family, you know. So th this is how, th this is what Guru Nanak has taught me, you know, to accommodate, to sort of live uh, an harmonious life, you know. Tell us this, uh, this uh, you know, the significance, I just alluded it to earlier, uh, you know, the significance of Guru Nanak's pilgrimage to Mecca. What prompted it and, and what, yeah, what Guru, impact did it have Guru on Nanak, his teachings? Guru Nanak, you know, as I said, you know, Nanak wore the dress of a uh, Muslim pilgrim, you know, Neel Vastar La Kapade Pare, he uh, wore a, a blue dress, you know, and when to Makkah for on pilgrimage, mm -hmm. and uh, there, he, like all other pilgrims, you know, because Guru Nanak's broad mind, you know, as was he, he would embrace uh, everyone around, you know, uh, brought people together, you know, mm -hmm. and this is how he he lived life, you know. And what happened in, in in Mecca when he went Makkah there? Mecca when when he went, you know, this story says that he he, he was tired much too tired, you know, and with his feet towards Mecca, he, he, he went to sleep, you know, mm -hmm. not know, not knowing or maybe knowing, and the, 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 his feet were towards Mecca, and when this, another pilgrim saw it, he was furious, he said, how dare you sleep with your feet towards Mecca, you know. Mm -hmm. Nanak was sleepy, you know, he said, I am tired, I have mm -hmm. walked all the way, Please turn my feet to the direction where God is not. <laughs> and the man realized that God is everywhere, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. So this is how it, mm -hmm. the story goes, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he came to understand the truth of life, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Explain to us some of the sort of the parallels in a sense. Uh, in, 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 in Sikhism to uh, and, and it, what it derives from the other traditions. It, it, it does derive, uh, you know, the notion For instance, of this oh, very Makkah par 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 variable, you know, <coughs> when he asked the man, turn my feet to the direction where God is not, the rather than, you know, par parable says Makkah turned, mm -hmm. uh, when Guru Nanak said this. But the fact, my, my, uh, in the way I look at it is, the man's thinking, you know, he says, what, God is everywhere, God is not, where God is not, you know. Mm -hmm. So this fact, you know, mm -hmm. turned, changed the man, brought about awakening for the man, you know, mm -hmm. and he, he, and he realized the truth mm -hmm. about it. You know. So if, if God is, is reality, as you describe it, what is the place for divine grace, for divine intervention, 
or does Sikhism take a very karmic view that as human beings we are responsible uh, for our happiness, for our sadness, for what happens to our lives and it is our actions that will determine what unfolds rather than divine intervention and it is really the word of, of, of God that is the guide to how we should live our lives. Is that a fair description? I think uh, Sikhism is, you know, for living a, 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 a truthful life, helpful life, it's a, it's a socially uh, useful life, and that is all. But the Guru, does the God answer prayers? The, your, your, your Guru is happy, your God is happy, you know. Mm -hmm. If you live a truthful life, and a life, if you work hard, earn, and share your earning with people, you know. After all, with, what is socialism and communism? You know, Guru Nanak said, said and then Sikhism, the first community longer started with Sikhism, you know. So this is how it, 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 our mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Sikh way of life is. You know. mm -hmm. To take that analogy just a step further, that in many traditions we pray to God to intervene on our behalf because we're unhappy, we're miserable, something is going wrong in our lives and, and there is a large body of opinion uh, that believes that God answers our prayers. So yes, if God that, that, is just does, reality, does, then does. who answers our prayers in Sikhism? Well, you need something, you know, you need some, some succor, some mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. from somewhere, you know, mm -hmm. and that a divine power, you know, mm -hmm. is, is there, you know. Mm -hmm. And Guru Nanak says, live a clean life. Mm -hmm. Be fair to... How does then uh, Sikhism react to or relate to modern scientific discoveries? There's a lot of, you know, dialogue between religion and science. How would Sikhism look at New science. No, no, we, we, we accept all this, all, all the development. It says it's, it's, it's the times and we adjust ourselves to it. Mm -hmm. And but the basic, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the element, mm -hmm. the, the truth mm -hmm. is there, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, as long as you are truthful, as long as mm -hmm. you, 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 you share what mm -hmm. you earn with mm -hmm. others, you know. The, the, the you you are socially acceptable mm -hmm. and probably it's, it's, it's acceptable to God also, mm -hmm. uh, divinity also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a sort of a, a, a final concluding uh, you know question for someone you know your age, almost ninety. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you've just done a definitive uh, work as a homage to God. You're uh, about to uh, you know you've got two volumes of your uh, autobiography. Uh, in, in publication and are completing that. What, what aspiration do you have for yourself? Well, as I said, you know, this transcreation I took as an assignment made to me by, God. by some power, you know. <laughs> and I accept that power, you know. And uh, then after that, what I believe is that Society has, my people have given me so much, you know, high education, so much experience, time to work as director All India Radio, director National Book Trust, then advisor in planning commission. I was gained all that experience, you know. I must give something back, you know. And that is why after this I have now started writing my memoirs. So that what I have gained from society, I should give back to society. Thank you very much, sir. This has been a great honor and a great blessing. Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs>